Hello, today's a bit different, but don't go anywhere. Today, rather than doing just one experiment, we've got loads of experiments. We're gonna be looking at the difference between reversible and irreversible changes. Welcome back to Science with Mr. Spowage. Before we go any further, let's understand some of the science behind reversible and irreversible changes. So in this video, we're going to be looking at states of matter. And we've touched upon these in previous videos, but in this video, we're going to go into them in a little bit more depth. When we talk about states of matter in science, we're referring to something being either a solid, a liquid, or a gas. They each are bonded together in slightly different ways, and the molecules move around in slightly different ways. In a solid, they've got very strong bonds. In a liquid, they've got quite moderate bonds. They can move around a bit more freely, in a gas, they've got very loose bonds, which means they're able to break free of the other molecules and sort of fly around. Let's look at a different way of thinking how we could understand the states of matter. I've enlisted the help of Rory and Millie to help me with this. So for the next minute or two, just imagine that these guys are atoms. First of all, we've got a solid where the molecules are really tightly bonded together. So if you push them, they move the other one next to it. Next, we've got a liquid where the molecules are a little bit looser and a bit freer, but they're still connected. So if one moves, it moves the other one around as well. And finally, we've got a gas where none of the molecules are really touching and they're free to bounce around as they want. This one took a while to stop. Reversible reactions are where we can move between these states of matter. So we could move between a solid and a liquid and we would call this melting. We could move between a liquid and a gas, and we would call this evaporating, and both of those require heat to make them happen. However, if we cool things down, we could move between a gas and a liquid. We call this condensing. And we could also move between a liquid and a solid. We call this solidifying. This example is for water, which is probably the most commonly known. We can move between solid water which we would call ice, to a liquid by melting it. We could also then evaporate that water and turn it into water vapour. We could then condense it by cooling that water vapour down, just like on your bathroom mirror. And then we could solidify that water by freezing it. Now this also is well known because of the water cycle, in which water evaporates, and then when it cools, it condenses and falls back down as precipitation or rain. Let's have a look at some experiments about reversible reactions. But before we do, a quick warning. Experiments are a brilliant way to learn, but they should not be tried without adult supervision. Sometimes they require heating things up and that could be dangerous if you're doing it on your own. So make sure you've got an adult if you want to have a go at these at home. The first is simply melting chocolate. It's a great way of understanding that we can move between solid chocolate and liquid chocolate and then back again because the chocolate will re-solidify. I'm melting it here over a bain-marie so that it heats gently and so it doesn't burn. The next is salt water solution. If we take salt that's been dissolved in water and then heat it up, we can get back the original salt that we started with because we evaporate away the water. Now the water could be collected by condensing it inside tubes, however in this case it's just gone off into the air around us. But as you can see, we've got back to the original salt that we started with in the salt solution. And the final example of a reversible change in this video is solder. This is a special type of metal that has a low melting point. So when it's pressed against a soldering iron, it can melt. Then. When it's not heated, it re-solidifies. This makes solder really useful in electronics and in other things like glass making, because when it's re-solidified, you've got a metal that's nice and strong and able to bond things together. So these are just some examples of reversible reactions. Let's have a look at irreversible reactions. This is when we can't move between the different states because something else has happened. Let's have a look at a couple of experiments to explore some irreversible reactions. Here's an everyday example. When we cook eggs, we can't get back to their original form because now they've been cooked. 
we've changed them chemically and changed the bonds inside them. It's the same as this cake. Once this cake has been baked, we can't get back to its original ingredients again. There's no way that I can separate the eggs or the milk or the flour or the bicarbonate of soda. We now end up with cake. Here's one definitely not to try at home. When we burn a match, we can't get back to the original wood and chemicals that were on the end of the match because it's now burnt. Instead, we've created a new substance. We've created ash. And we can't use that to get back to wood. It's an irreversible change. And finally, there's mixing. Sometimes when we mix chemicals together, chemical reactions take place. We're gonna look at this in the next video. So these are just some examples of irreversible reactions. Let's test your knowledge with a quick quiz. Is this candle burning a reversible or an irreversible reaction? What do you think? I'll be honest, it's a bit of a trick question because if I'm talking about the candle wax, watch this sped up footage. Over time, the candle gets much smaller because the wax is the fuel. As the wax melts, it's drawn up the wick and changed into a gas, which then burns. Do you not believe me about the gas? Check out this slow motion footage of how you can light a candle without even touching it. Did you see it happen? If not, watch closely again. The match never touches the candle, but because the wax is in a vapor form, it lights it straight out of the air. So, although melting wax is a reversible reaction, it will re-solidify, burning a candle is irreversible because the fuel is being burnt. Also, slight aside, it took 13 minutes for the whole candle to burn. A tiny little birthday candle, 13 minutes. So now you know the difference between a reversible and irreversible chain, it's time to watch the next video about chemical reactions. Let's see some more experiments in those videos that you can try at home. See you later.